Hello, welcome to Concession Impressions, a podcast about two people who review movies that they just watched. I am one of your hosts, Michelangelo, and I am joined, as always, with... Charles, here. Hi. The initial wave you made would not pick up on a microphone, so I'm glad you introduced yourself. Yeah. Today's a very special episode because we're not recording in my car. We're recording in my living room slash kitchen slash dining room. One bedroom apartment. Because we just watched a film on streaming, not in a movie theater. But that's also not the most crazy thing that's going on. We have another very special occasion going on because this is also the first episode that we are joined with a guest. Introducing Yumi. Hi, Yumi. Hi, everyone. This is Yumi. So today we're viewing Pinocchio. Yumi, I would say that you're a pretty big... Disney fan. Yeah, so I think it'd be especially interesting to hear your thoughts on this film. So Charles, without further ado, let's get down to business to defeat the hounds yeah that's it it is the business So let's jump into what is your initial thoughts? See it, don't see it, go, Charles. I think if you have small children, it's a great movie to put on in the background while you're doing other things to distract them. Okay. Uh, you mean go. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to decide, but uh, I agree with Chase, I guess. Okay. Like if you are... If you're a fan? If you're a fan, watch it. <laughs> yeah. I would say if you already have a subscription to Disney+, Plus, might as well just watch it. Like if you don't have Disney+, Plus don't sign up for Disney Plus just to watch this film. That would yeah. be a waste of money. Yeah. Cool. I want to just blow through that if you don't mind, Chase. Is that okay? Like just to jump right into spoilers because there's yes, so many go. things that I want to just go, start spoiling. Go. All right, well, here we go, Geppetto, let's go. Because the movie rhymes a lot, right? They did that in this version. I don't remember. Did they do that in the original version too? Like I every didn't think line so. of dialogue, like rhyming and they leading do. into a song? They, no, they're not a even musical the at all. Yeah. The original one, right? They don't yep, sing at all. You know, yeah, that part only. Yeah. They don't really sing. Um, yeah. Well, they did the Wish Upon a Star song. I think that just plays over, right? Yeah, it, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no one sings it, yeah. yeah. This time they had Cynthia Erivo, who I enjoy quite a lot as a singer and actress, yeah. just kind of phoning it in a little bit in this role. <laughs> she's great in other things. Yeah, she's like a greater play actor. Right? Yeah, she's yeah. Broadway star. Well, I will say that I think the characters are very COVID friendly, and I felt like I <laughs> like it looked like every single character was filmed on a green screen and then just thrown into a 3D crafted set. Yeah, and there was very minimal minimal of a set and there's a certain point you can tell that the set goes away and there's now a 3d model mm -hmm. crafted everything and then i think sometimes it does really well i think like certain close-ups and it's like oh this looks like a kind of a well-crafted 3d model or 3d set other times it's like so blatantly obvious that this is cg that it looks kind of creepy is that it, like for yourself when you for this movie yeah because i just it, it just kept kept drawing me out of the movie and just thinking like seeing Tom Hanks grab Pinocchio's hand and yeah. it, it doesn't look yeah. like they're holding hands or when he's holding Pinocchio and just looks like there's like so much space between his arms <laughs> and, is weird. and Pinocchio. I'm like, what's going on? Here? So <laughs> I, I don't think the CGI was great for the majority of the film. I think there like there were some questionable choices with the CGI too. Like I don't think if I was making this movie, I would have had the two animal characters the fox and the like the cat yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 I don't think I would have had them in this as like those characters I maybe would have had like a version of them as like live action characters maybe mm, I, I thought they would do the live action version yeah. like it seems like a fox so it seems like a cat but it, like not actually the animals right like a foxy kicking Michael Key mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I think it, it like works well enough to have the cricket be kind of Honestly, animated. Yeah. And I will say also speaking of the cricket, I think it is 
probably the best part of the film. He's the best part of the original film too, yeah. in my opinion. Like, I think he does a great job voice. You don't even tell that it's it's Joseph Gordon Levitt. No, you can't. He does a really good in a way Jiminy cricket accent. Yeah, it looks it's kinda <laughs> like sounds sounds a little creepy sometimes when you, when you just imagine Joseph Gordon Levitt making this voice. But then again, like I think he does a good job and I think it's the most like interesting character and fun. But he doesn't get his uh little badge at the end. No, he oh, doesn't. Yeah. See, I told you. <laughs> We, we had a conversation as we were watching the original movie about little things that old movies would do as like setups and payoffs and a lot of newer movies don't properly set up anything or pay it off and this movie is another example where they don't set up other little things to fill out the character journeys of other characters. They're just solely focused on the main storyline yeah. in a really mm -hmm. almost too tight of a way. Yeah, I feel like they could have just done that. I don't know, it felt weird because... They, he didn't even they, wish to die. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, they, got, they took out certain things from the old films and added a lot of extra stuff yeah. that feels like didn't really need to be there. So Yumi, what would you think about them turning it into a musical, adding three times the amount of songs that was originally in the movie, <laughs> Uh, and also like adding a bunch of different scenes to the film. So for the original film, I think it's not a really like child friendly film, I guess. <laughs> Nowadays. Yeah. By, yeah, by today's I think standards. like I watched the original Pinocchio when I was a kid, really like a lot. I had a DVD and I rewatched it a lot and a lot, but I even didn't remember until I watched recently like, oh, it's this much like dark. <laughs> you know yeah for the original one mm -hmm. so like i was wondering like how they do that for the as a nowadays movie mm -hmm. for this one they need to take it out that part for nowadays film right like they yeah. cannot show kids like that much dark things <laughs> right now so yeah. they need to make it to the musical version mm -hmm. like that's kind of like a good thing i guess they make it better for the kids yeah i guess it is definitely more kid friendly yeah they even change like them drinking Drinking alcohol, yeah, root to them, beer, to root, to root beer instead of beer, <laughs> and they don't smoke. Okay, speaking they of don't that, smoke. Sorry, really quickly, that was another thing that I yeah, yeah, they didn't smoke. But I just want to say really quickly about the root beer. I don't understand why all the root beer had to be CG. Oh uh, yeah, because they wanted the fuzz, or not the fuzz, the foam. Like they could have done that. <laughs> like I don't understand like why. What was the creative reason yeah, to so to do weird. that? It looked so. They did it like four times. Yeah. The, what, what's the other kid's name? Limp Lumpkin? Limp Biscuit? I don't know, I whatever forgot. his name is. <laughs> the, the, the naughty kid that turns into a donkey. He like blows on the yeah, root yeah. beer like four times yeah. just to like really justify it. And the first time he drinks it, he like downs the entire <laughs> yeah. thing, like the size of his body. He drinks the whole thing in like half a second and he's like, whoa, well, I gotta go drink another one. Superpowers of naughty children. <laughs> I get like it, it was so weird. It, again, like it's one of those moments that just took out of it. Although I think like you said it, while we were watching it you were like that's really cool I did think that the whole like some of the VFX like the the ship turning into a Ferris wheel turning into like a yeah. roller coaster I was also wondering like after watching this movie how kids think about Disneyland <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you it does kind of call because out... like they had a like a the incredible coaster like mm -hmm. a like Style a roller there. coaster and then like they had a Ferris, Ferris wheel. wheel yeah it seems like mm, yeah, when they, well, make, they think about it after watching When the it. kids go to Disneyland, they're like, like they, wait, Incredicoaster doesn't go into the, the Ferris wheel? No, and after then this, we, we're going to be donkey? Yeah, like, <laughs> I don't want to go to Disney anymore. Like, what? that's what I was thinking mm -hmm. as I watch it. Yeah, that is true. Because I think in by taking away some of those elements that might not be so um, appropriate nowadays, but that's like the point of the Pleasure Island is that it's all it's all bad stuff. Yeah. So like yeah. by, by making it almost child friendly they've kind of ruined the plot point there yeah, yeah definitely. also like the bad guy it's became like a dust yeah they they, yeah. they got rid of all the like bad human adults and turned them to like spirits. yeah like seems like uh, they wants to fool kids again like mm -hmm. oh adult it's like everyone every adult is good person the bad person yeah, is all dust kind of like don't trust any wicked specters <laughs> floating around and trying to kidnap you what was that actor though he was the only one that I thought was like really giving it their all <laughs> in terms of the adult actors and this. The, the coachman? Yeah. Luke Evan? Luke Evan. Yeah, the one, the new new song they added. If you ever were thinking, 
oh, Pleasure Island needed a song here, then that that part, yeah, when when the... I don't know that it's that song it's kind of like taken Encanto Bruno song. Oh, we don't talk about Bruno? Yeah, like it's like a really like a dark mm. dark themed but like it's for catchy. I think that was my favorite part of the movie actually was the coachman coming in and giving his song because I thought he was the only one that felt like they were giving it their all. I, I think Tom Hanks definitely did something. I don't know. I felt like Tom Hanks mm. was phoning it in. I felt that he was too young. Too young. Interesting. For this Geppetto. Tom I Hanks is an old dude. Geppetto. I don't know. <laughs> there was that one lady, the school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Diversity is great. I'm all for it. But this was so weird and so random having this one random background character be this black lady with an Italian accent. Like a very like racist Italian accent. Yeah, and she just like, she literally, it was like five seconds of her just saying, Japan! <laughs> I feel like they've missed the point <laughs> there. <laughs> It's not what diversity means. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, I think so. Like the blue fairy became mm -hmm. its good thing, I thought. Yeah, that one is totally yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. The only thing about that and a lot of, again, it's like, I think a lot of it was just like, it just felt weird in terms of like the blue fairy just felt like a composited yeah. thing just flying around and just like, oh, I'm going to composite out of here. I don't know. Oh, I yeah. Just, like, I a think lot that could have been okay for her character because she is supposed to be sort of ethereal. But the coachman also had the same problem. But yeah, exactly. He it was wasn't like, a choice. He was sitting yeah. still and he's like moving with the car <laughs> and then he just like suddenly collapses into the woodwork and then just disappears. And it's just like, what's going on here? What's... <laughs> they just like filmed him still and they just are like, oh, we have to get him into this area and then out of this area. So we're just going to composite him just folding into this trunk here and then he just disappears. I think that's the problem I have with all the characters is that they just looked. I couldn't even focus on their they're acting because mm -hmm. I was so drawn out by like the weirdness of the direction of the mm. like the, the whole thing talent. just feels dumbed down I think compared to even the original which I think is a fairly simplistic story and mm. anyway you know like the whole thing like the original Pinocchio is, is essentially a story not the original original but the original Disney, Disney. <laughs> is essentially a story about children mm. learning to be respectful and like Don't do respect their parents <laughs> yeah. yeah like that that's what the story is is about it's sort of a coming of age movie for like between like a toddler and slightly older toddler. <laughs> yeah. Whereas this movie, I feel like they abandoned that entirely. Only like clearly somebody was thinking about that because that's like what the movie is about. But they didn't really like nail down any of that. And I feel like they could have made a more interesting, more thoughtful movie if they had left the like nostalgia trip behind mm -hmm. and just thought about how do we make a modern movie about children learning learning to behave yeah and like the consequences of their actions and how do we make that modern movie with the pinocchio setup they did have some moments in there I think that they were like maybe trying to and I felt like in the, the screen like the writer's room they were like oh maybe let's add a scene here where, where, where Pinocchio learns something and then someone else comes in and is like but also what if <laughs> Pinocchio had a love interest and then they're like yes that was so that weird was so too because weird. Yeah. Pinocchio's like a small child yeah, like and this is like an adult woman pretending to be a puppet <laughs> also like the adult woman like I forgot the name of her but uh, like her story wise like why they added to, it's like, so a, random yeah, yeah like it's a, so weird but the broken yeah, leg we, girl we, we, and like, then like it's just a, again like a weird force diversity thing I don't know it just I think they just wanted to round out some of the stories because I think the one of the problems I think after rewatching the original Pinocchio again there are like leaps where it feels like there are scenes that are just missing where it's like oh, wait how did how how did Geppetto get in the ocean? How does Pinocchio find him? How, like there are certain aspects that just like don't make sense. Like how does Jimmy Cr Cricket find Pinocchio and save him and throw that? So like, I think that they were like, oh, we need to like connect those dots a little better. And then they're like, well, how are we gonna do that? Oh, we're just gonna add a whole new character, a whole new story. But it just ends up feeling odd and yeah, like, yeah, unwelcome. Yeah, it's so odd. There are choices that are made in this movie that I think are clearly about just we're going to re rehash the original movie and make it a nostalgia trip. There are choices that are clearly made that 
are about trying to soften the original movie so that it's more appropriate for modern audiences. Mm. And then there are like these weird choices that are actually them veering away from the original story, Mm -hmm. like the storyline about Geppetto and his child being dead. Yeah. (laughs) That I actually thought was a good decision. I like that a lot, actually. Because it made Geppetto's like wish much more substantial and interesting. Yeah. And it also started the movie off on a really dark note. A really somber (laughs) dark note, yeah. It kind of was like interesting interested in it and it kind of just like didn't touch upon i like they never honestly, touch it up. yeah <laughs> i was honestly i totally forgot about it until you brought it up right now because like i was thinking in the beginning like wow this is actually like such an interesting way to start this film a much better way and then it just like doesn't touch it yeah. like doesn't go over it at all it gives so much more depth to the geppetto character which is never actually touched upon again throughout the story <laughs> The only other scene that we get is the clocks. Oh, that yeah. little bit helps deepen his character a little bit too and the connection to his dead wife, which they just kill everybody up in here. Yeah. And him selling those to afford the boat the, the world makes a lot more sense boat. now. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, I sold every single clock and all I can afford was <laughs> He this could have made a bigger boat. boat with the material from the clocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and he's a woodworker. I don't. <laughs> That's also yeah. true. <laughs> okay. Also, this this entire movie happens in the span of one day. So apparently, well, that doesn't even seem right either. Like it seems like there were weeks go by, right? Like in well, actually, in the beginning, they say weeks go by, right? Or some amount of time goes by because yeah, they. Yeah, yeah. They, Geppetto and him and Pinocchio spend time together. Yeah. And then, like, Pinocchio sees the sun for the first time. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, Moonlight needs to come in inside of the room, but no sunlight. <laughs> no sun ever enters the house. Yeah, well, I mean, Geppetto says at one point, oh, this is the first time I've stepped outside of my house and since his family died. Right. Which I'm like, how? <laughs> how does is someone take care of him? Like, you never, I don't know. There's nothing ever happening in that house. Like, how does he get any of his food, water, any support? anything how does he live how does he pay rent is there rent i don't know see there's so many things that just one line just causes so many issues clearly this is a trend with uh, live action disney movies is that they are pretty bad especially in (laughs) comparison to the original yeah and it's because they are so much playing off of the nostalgia i think is that that's their only goal is to make something that will activate the nostalgia part of our generation's brain and be acceptable to watch by young young children <laughs> so that parents can put it on in the background and, and not be too distracting but be enough distracting that the children will leave them alone for a couple hours <laughs> yeah. that is i think yeah. their only goals here they're not trying to make a good movie they're not trying to make a genuine remake they're not trying to make anything other than something that will make money <laughs> but in like the most but that makes sense for the it's only coming out for disney plus though it's right. not a coming yeah. out for the theater Exactly. That's true. That means Disney is um, embarrassed about the film they made themselves. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like I think it. Yeah. I don't know. It's so weird. Like because original one is one hour and a half, mm-hmm. but they are making like two hours film. Yeah. And well, then, I don't know where the extra half hour comes from. Can, can I? Yeah. So here's the thing. I initially thought that so this story, the original animated film, was based on a book, also Pinocchio, which is completely different. There's so much. more more that happens in the book that I was thinking oh maybe they're gonna pull more from that but then I guess probably not because it's a lot darker that's Pinoc- what I was wondering Pinocchio gets hanged uh, <laughs> and then killed <laughs> he gets stabbed I think that might be the del Toro version that we're gonna get later this year maybe uh, you know the cat that there's the fox and the cat uh-huh. Pinocchio bites off one of the the, the cat's hands um, oh god the hands that was not to be like another aside from this uh-huh. point but the hands the way they were animated uh Uh, in this movie bothered me so much because they gave the fox like human sized and proportioned hands and he's the only animated character that has human proportioned hands (laughs) and it just like really bothered me for some reason (laughs) yeah that's true especially since the cat next to him had cat hands had like a weird hybrid cat human yeah anyway sorry continue your point no no i was just (laughs) there is so much more that happens i was like oh maybe they are gonna go in this darker like way and especially since the beginning was dark mm-hmm. but i was like i guess not because like yumi said it feels like they just wanted to make a more child-friendly thing and i think like you said the the other pinocchio film coming out later this year probably will be more closer to the original than the disney also version. it's not a disney no it's no. it's by like another uh, director who 
has made some pretty creepy other films. It's Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. But I really like the detail of this movie, like the Pinocchio's tail is also made in wood. wood and I like, like that the, as well. Yeah, those part is really cute. But as a cat owner, I think Figaro is too small. <laughs> the girl's like, uh, yeah, I was Weirdly like, small. it's yeah. a kitten, a little kitten. And also not well animated either. Again, sorry, like I'm just keep going back to that, but it's just the biggest thing that kind of just throws me off in this film. I feel like but there's... But I things. really liked the detail for the clock too. Too. Like they have mm-hmm. a lot of Disney characters. Oh, like... that was weird for me. <laughs> I didn't enjoy that so really? much because it so took me cute. out of it. It, it definitely yeah. was like, oh, here's all the little hidden right. Easter eggs. But it's not a hidden. <laughs> it was. I mean, it's all yeah. It's like it's right too in your face. Always. I, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean it's just it's it's too meta textual for me, <laughs> and I found it like slightly off putting. But it's I really enjoyed it. Like each time the end, like they are going to like different clocks, right? The mm-hmm. end is always princess dying, like oh, yeah, like yeah. not dying, but like <laughs> being like, cursed like, part. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's really funny. It's <laughs> cute. <laughs> It was interesting. Also seeing Tom Hanks and then also uh, yeah, Woody, Woody was in there too, which is also oh, Tom yeah. Hanks. But like that's like some of that just the reason it takes me out is that it's a completely different style. Yeah. So like you see this like 1800s, 1700s esque house, and then you see all these like modern yeah, yeah characters. That's really yeah. At, like Maleficent. For instance, yeah, was yeah, in yeah. one of them, and that was so weird. What did you think of the ending? Because uh, the ending was also very weird and was a deviation from the original. Yeah, he didn't. He became real. He became a. Oh no! They like no, implied that they, he may or may not have, but they, then they showed him. No. Kind. Of, no, they did. They no, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. My problem with the ending is that they ripped off. Pokemon. No, no, no! I don't think it's. <laughs> it, you said it while we were watching a movie, but like. Literally in Rapunzel, they're doing like the tangle, okay. the Rapunzel mm-hmm. crying. And Pokemon did it first. Pokemon did it first. Rider. Ash dies, <laughs> Pikachu cries, and Pikachu's tear brings Ash back to life. All right, they did it first, <laughs> then Rapunzel and Entangled, that happened, and then now in this one, literally Pinocchio is crying on, and freaking, what's his name, Geppetto, and like, <laughs> brings it back to life. It, I can't believe they're just like, and they must have watched Pokemon, and they're like, oh, how do we end this movie? We're just going to copy Pokemon. <laughs> Very possibly. <laughs> what I was talking about was the way yeah. they ended it with, yes, yes, with yes. it kind of being this like slightly ambiguous ending where they're like, like, oh, it's told that he turned into a real boy, but they're not actually going to show us him turning into a real boy, but they kind of do. Well, they they're like they show his leg transforming into like a normal ish human oh, leg. Did, did they? I totally yeah. missed that. I, I thought it was more of like Tom Hanks as Geppetto saying, Oh, you were more of a real boy than any other real boy. And to me, that makes you a real yeah, boy. Yeah, that's it. I no, thought that was just me, like, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I thought that was an interesting choice too, because they clearly wanted to be like, Oh, they didn't want it to be like he's replacing his old son. And they didn't want him to be like, They're just like, Pinocchio is his dead son. So it, it's like deeper than that. It's that they're. He's moved on, or he's finally done grieving, and this he has a new child to bring light into his life or something. Uh-huh. I think that's what they were going for. I think so. I but it was kind of ham-fisted. I, I honestly <laughs> didn't mind it as much as all the other things that, that happened in this film. Mm. Especially, like, I was still, like flipping out about the Pokemon thing <laughs> that I, I, I didn't really care about it at that point. They ended it so quick. I didn't really like everything is Pinocchio is solving really easily. Yeah. I mean, that's not, that's Pinocchio almost. The original. <laughs> really? Like original one, well, he's just a dumb boy. Yeah, he's a dumb boy and then the fairy comes back a lot yeah. of times to save him. That's true. Uh, like, Pinocchio doesn't do anything, right? Like, in the original, technically, in the, the original, original one, one. The original, original story <laughs> went back that far. He's just a jerk. He, like, <laughs> he immediately kills Jiminy Cricket. Oh, God. He, like, <laughs> breaks Geppetto's nose and sends him to jail. And, like... <laughs> He just is an overall, like, a jerk for everything he does in the, in the original story. Like, this is, like, now he's just a Superman, kind of, like. He can... He can call, start fire. Yeah, he yeah. can start a fire. He can move faster than whale. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's know. Too... Just plot convenient. <laughs> yeah. Because they had to make it, like, two hours, not, like, ten hours. Yeah, right? Like, that's yeah. kind of it. Yeah. Well, but on that note, let's go into our concession picks 
for this movie. So Yumi... I'm the fourth? As the guest... No, I just want to explain <laughs> to you what the ranking system is. I already know it. But I'm going to explain to you anyways. <laughs> um, so pretty much it's going to be out of four ranks. The bottom rank is going to be Raisinets, the worst. A little bit better than that is going to be Hot Dog. And then a good rating would be Popcorn. And then the best rating would be Peanut M&M's. So I will go first, I guess. Okay. And I'll just start there. I want to rank it a Raisinets film. Okay. That's what I think. <laughs> I would give it a low hot dog because it's just very unsatisfying. But like I understand why it exists as it does. And like I get that there's an audience. I think there's a reason for it to exist. Like a Raisinette films for me, it's like there's no reason for this to exist at all. It's just get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Burn all the copies. <laughs> All right. It's a hot, if it's a hot dog, it's a poorly animated hot dog. Yeah. But anyways, Yumi? So yes. for me, it's also hot dog because like I still love Disney. <laughs> and it's like it became kind of like fun way to become like musical. It's more enjoyable singing. And yeah, I think story wise, it's a little bit became more complicated. But it, like so it's not a good as original. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad as written it, I think. Okay, I mean, I'm a little bit harsh. <laughs> I think I will say that the, the biggest similarity that this film and the original film uh, have in common is that they're probably both going to be huge failures. <laughs> was the original a huge failure? Originally it was, yeah. Interesting. It wasn't popular until years later, until it made a lot of money, but initially it completely flopped in the theaters. Fascinating. Well, there you got it. This is the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah, so that's our review of the movie Pinocchio 2022, the live action remake of the original Pinocchio. Yeah, and that's all I gotta say. Geppetto! <laughs> Bye! Bye. <laughs>